All right. Good. Good morning. Uh, thanks for coming in. And uh, my name is Sunil Kamath, and uh, I'm part of a uh, uh, Azure Data uh, team at Microsoft, and I'm responsible for the overall product management uh, function that includes the creating the strategy, vision, and 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 driving the roadmap for open source managed databases on Azure. So, as you all may know, uh, we now have a uh, like a Postgres service uh, on the Azure Cloud, which, uh, which, is, which is the topic that I'm going to be talking more about today. And, 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 and as part of the team, it gives me my, my, it's my pleasure to come and talk to the database guys like yourself, uh, which is what I do every day, uh, talking to the database uh, folks and, uh, and partners and customers and so on. So as you all know, um, Azure released a ma fully managed Postgres SQL service on the platform. Uh, we were just generally available in March this year. So since we have started the service, uh, we started the service about a uh, little over a year ago. Uh, we started in preview, um, and the response that we have been getting from customers and the community has been phenomenal. Um, and, and the service is being now adopted and is growing very, very fast uh, compared to other data services. And also want to give you a little bit of uh, insights on, on how we went about uh, deciding to add PostgreSQL service on the Azure platform. Like you may all relate Microsoft as, as a SQL server shop, right? Um, why would we go do um, uh, PostgreSQL service? Um, the fact is that we have been listening to customers that, uh, and, and developers who have been asking us to add support for Postgres. So it's the process of listening that got us to um, uh, create this service uh, on the platform. And also, since we started, uh, our goal was very conservative. Our goal was there's been a customers that are asking for us to add Postgres into the platform. and um, and, and we wanted to go enable that. But since we started the service, we saw huge growth and new type of workloads, new customers that are coming in and, and using the service from running mission critical database workloads to uh, customers that are startups, big enterprises, software as a service, ISVs, that are now all embracing and coming onto the Azure platform and using Postgres service. So that got us to think seriously about now, all right, so it believes that, it, so, so what the conclusion, the so feedback we got was the, the service that, uh, that we were, were creating is actually adding a good significant value to the community. So we, what we said was we doubled down on, these, uh, on, on, on this uh, Postgres service and they took on a goal to build the best managed Postgres service for the cloud. And I'll talk about what some, th some of the things that we have done in the, uh, in the service, and also I'll talk a little bit about what we are uh, going to be doing in the future. So as I said, the Azure database for Postgres is a fully managed uh, database service on the Azure platform. In fact, it is built on the same platform that, ha that is powering or is being used for Azure SQL database. That means most of the innovations, most of the value that we have created with running Azure SQL database, we are bringing in the same innovations to the Azure Postgres service as well. But first and foremost, this Postgres service that we are running is using the community version of the Postgres. It means this is not a forked version of Postgres or this is not an enhanced version of Postgres. It's the same Postgres that you get when you download from Postgres.org and run it in your laptop or a desktop or anywhere else on a virtual machine, on premises or anywhere else. And what that mean, what that gives us is the promise, back, promise to the users and to the community that we are going to leverage the innovations that continuously happens onto the Postgres uh, engine and then add value and innovations around core business critical uh, fear functions like availability, fault tolerance, liability, security, 
manageability. That is where we are adding and complementing the value of Postgres that is built by the community and making it the best Postgres that you can be running in the cloud. The key value that we have added, and, and in fact, we are the only cloud provider in the world today that provides a highly available Postgres in the cloud service. We have what we call as the built-in high availability. And because of this built-in high availability, we are able to provide four nines of industry-leading SLAs for single instance of databases. Now, say, for example, you have to run Postgres on premises or on a virtual machine on an infrastructure cloud. Most likely, for high availability, you have to create two virtual machines or you have to create two instances. You have to replicate the day, the log from uh, the, the wall logs from the primary to the secondary and do all the management of failover, monitoring and so on. Now, the built-in high availability architecture we have built will give you 4.9 of SLA for single instance databases. That means for those users that want to save costs, now they can also have an industry leading SLA for each database instances. So, Customers or users or developers do not have to go and set up replication. And it's the same design and architecture that allows us to provide elastic scaling of performance on the fly. In the seconds, you can scale, you can scale up compute or you can scale down compute. And you can seamlessly scale storage with no application uh, downtime. And the second uh, core pillar where we are adding value is in making sure that the, fun, that the, that the service, that the data that is in the database is fully secure. Uh, and I'll be talking more about the security and compliance and, and the work that we have done in that space. All of this is now enabled on top of industry leading global reach. Azure Cloud is available now in 50 regions across the globe. And we are working are already available in over 30 regions and by the end of this year we will be in all regions where Azure is present. And another core element is uh, the, of work that we have done and we continue to do is that we know when users want to run their applications or want to create applications, it is not just about the database, it is about the entire application stack. And making it, uh, making in, uh, ensuring that these applications can run seamlessly with their existing uh, frameworks or language stacks or, or be like, for example, it could be node, node, node uh, base drivers or PHP or Python or Ruby or whatever. They can not only run these language stacks but also provide an integrated developer experience. For example, if you want to create a container app, now, these Postgres service is integrated into the development environment of creating a container. Or you want to use a Kubernetes and use Azure Kubernetes service, which is a fully managed Kubernetes service on the, on the Azure cloud. It's already integrated with the Azure Postgres service. Or you want to visualize your data for data science or data modeling. It's integrated with uh, like uh, Microsoft Power BI. So what we are doing with Postgres is not only providing a fully managed service, but integrating it to all the wider application frameworks and s services and other data products so that the end user, as they're looking at building a solution, can easily do so um, with, uh, with enhanced productivity. So like as I said, since we started the service, now we see the service is being used in 82 countries around the world, in over, in present in over 30 regions. And that's what I was saying. The, 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 the feedback and the adoption that we are seeing of the service the, on, on the cloud has been phenomenal, which makes us wanting to do more and add, add more innovations um, in the area of uh, uh, productivity, security, intelligence, and, and, and so on. Now, as I talk about the, the, the doctor, uh, given a, like a basic introduction of what, what we have done, uh, I also want to share with you as in, the, in the community around what are some of the core lessons that we have learned operating and running the Postgres service in the cloud. I thought it might be some useful uh, insights that you can take with you. The first learning has been that 
regardless of database engines, whether it is a commercial database or open source database, the focus of fundamentals remains the same. The fundamentals, what we mean is reliability, fault tolerance, high availability, disaster recovery, all of this are equally important to the open source database as much as it is for the commercial databases. Right? And that's a testament to the uh, adoption that, that, uh, that we are seeing and, and, and those customers that are using Postgres to run their mission critical apps. And it's the mission critical apps driving a very sound and, 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 and driving a very core dependency and requirements around these strong fundamentals. Security and compliance. As we talk to the CIOs of the various industries across the globe, security is one of them, if not the most critical, is one of the highly important um, uh, capability that they uh, look for when they are choosing a cloud platform. And that is why from day one as we, as we designed the service, we had a huge focus on, um, on driving the industry compliance, and driving the industry certifications, and making sure that the data is fully protected and, and, and that all of these security capabilities are built into the platform, into the service, without the customer or users having to do anything with, uh, above and beyond. And end-to-end -end solutions, and this I already alluded to a little bit. Customers are not bringing a database. When we saw, like, they, they were not looking at how do I take my Postgres database from A and get it into the cloud. What they really wanted was how, how does my entire application stack work on the platform. And that includes the, the, like all the way from the development tools that they're used to, uh, to uh, the application um, uh, frameworks that, they, that they're using to actually build that application to uh, the BI tools and, and, and so on and forth. So they are really looking for end-to-end -end solution and not just a database. And, and finally, the cloud platform itself in the sense of how much, how they can trust the cloud provider to take the customers on the journey towards digital transformation. And this is not just about a database. It's about the, 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 the trusted nature of the cloud provider, the availability in the region. So we have so many customers that are like, especially in the startups, they start small, right? That's the definition of startups. But as their aspirations grow and they want to be present in more and more regions, they want to scale their business, they want to pick a cloud provider that can take them to these regions. So with Azure and being uh, available in 50 plus regions, Customers can, um, these, these startups and enterprises can rely on Azure to be their most trusted platform uh, or cloud provider to take their business and grow their businesses. Let's take a, a little bit deeper dive on, the, on, on, on each of this. So on the fundamentals, high availability, disaster recovery, and elastic scaling. And I'll talk more about and also uh, show you the innovation, the unique architecture that actually we have implemented to actually bring the, uh, to bring the service. So in terms of what is offered in the managed service, so this chart basically shows the different tiers that are available for customers to use uh, the fully managed Postgres service. It's divided into basic general purpose and memory optimized. And today, in the service, we support scaling up to 32 cores, and the, and the support for 64 up to scaling up to 64 cores is coming very soon. You can create databases for up to four terabytes. You can scale IOPS to about 6,000 IOPS today. The service offers built-in automated backups, and you can choose how long you want to, how long the backups you want to retain. We support up from seven days up to 35 days. And the, also what we provide is these backups can be geo-replicated to another region. And it's done automatically by the service. And, that, and, more, and the benefits of that is in the event a region were to go down or you were to have a disaster recovery or you want to do disaster recovery, you can use the backups that is geo redundantly stored in another region and, reco and recover your database anywhere else in any other Azure cloud. And that's available out of the box for our users. And it's one of the very unique capabilities that we offer the disaster recovery out of the box. 
Now, this is the unique architecture that we have built, which, which is what is powering um, the Azure Postgres service. Now, you see the Postgres application on the right. Now, you see Gateway. The Gateway is also, Gateway is one of the, um, one of the, uh, the, the, the fundamental element in how the built-in HA works. So, co clients connecting to the database always connect through the Gateway. The Gateway is listening on the Postgres port. Right? The, the standard 5432 port. And what the gateway does, it uh, not only it acts as a connection proxy, but when the connection request comes to the gateway, it determines which node in the cluster, in the backend cloud cluster, which is, which is essentially think about it as the data plane, to connect to or where the database is, resides. And that allows us to actually provide, so when the backend instance goes down, Client connections continue to go to the gateway, and when the instance comes up, automatically reissues the connection to the backend instance. So one of the prime that, that's how that, that's how, that's why I call it one of the fundamental ways in which uh, we have implemented the built-in I availability. Now you see the Postgres cylinder. I'll I'll I'll, I'll talk about it and then I'll take questions. Then you see the Postgres cylinder there. So that what that signifies is that we are not running Postgres on a virtual machine number one, right? Because you know when you run these databases on a virtual machine and the virtual machine goes down, it can take minutes to recover. So we are running this on our own proprietary build, that Microsoft built container technology. Right? So it's not a Docker container or a Linux LZ container. It's a container technology that we built within the data team to host secure multi-tenant database services like Postgres. Now, because it is using a container uh, technology, spinning up the container is essentially is a process it takes two seconds. Right? And that's how we are able to quickly recover database instances when it goes down. And then, you, and then coming to the storage. So for storage, we use remote storage, remote blob storage. Data is replicated automatically three times. So in the event, if any one of the data is going to go, the, the, the disk were to go down, it automatically recovers from those kind of failures. And the, and the third element that we have done to implement this HA is very, very fast attach and detach of remote storage to the container instance. For example, when the instance goes down, we are able to fast detach the storage from the previous instance and, and reattach to the new instance, and it takes 10 seconds for us to complete that. So it's this combination of these three technologies, or I would say the design of how we have implemented the Postgres service, allows us to give you four nine of SLAs for single instance. And then what does that mean to end users, for end customers? You get HA out of the box with half the cost. In fact, running Postgres on the managed service is cheaper for users compared to even running on a virtual machine. So now, you'll also see how the elastic scaling works on the fly. Right? So when elastic scaling, you create a new instance, and then the gateway connects to the new instance. And that's how fast it is. And it's detached and attached to the new instance. And that's how the scaling operation happens. You can scale up or you can scale down. On the storage, you just increase the size of the blob. The application will not even notice um, the impact during the scale operation. And in fact, that's another unique value. So performance management, which, have, which, is a, which is a major concern and a challenge for many of the developers and DBAs, they can rely on the platform to provide those seamless capabilities. Now, on the security and compliance, I mentioned that we, took, we take security very, very close to our heart. It's, it's built into the platform. So, as a result, data at rest is encrypted by default using the AES 256-bit encryption. It's already enabled with SSL, with the TLS 1.2 standards. You optionally have an ability to disable. We don't recommend it, but out of the box, when you create your instance, it's secured by default with SSL and encryption on, on, on disk. And then if you want to create this database within a virtual network so that only the application, only the application virtual machines um, can connect to the database, we have, 
convenient service endpoints that you could use and you could configure your database. Which means now you have more secure connectivity between our application and your database instance. And then it has been certified through all industry certifications, global and local. And, and that includes ISO, PCI, SOC, HIPAA, um, and we are also on our way to uh, get certified on FedRAMP uh, for, for government clouds. And then we are also the only cloud, and this service is already GDPR compliant. And I know GDPR has not hit Brazil yet, but and it's a standard, it's a, it's a privacy rule that kicked in, that kicked in, in in the month of May in Europe. Um, and Azure took the uh, uh, decision to make all our services and the platform GDPR compliant, and we and we worked months and months to actually make that. Um, make that happen in time in the, during the month of May. And I talked about the end-to-end -end solutions. That is, the users as they're wanting to create these apps and bring these apps onto the cloud are not just talking about the database, but also their end-to-end -end stack, whether it be it, they're wanting to run intelligent apps using machine learning on data that is stored in the Postgres database. So, so integrating the cognitive services APIs to build those machine learning algorithms out of the box, connecting to their data that is sitting in the Postgres database, that's what we're talking about in how we are integrating it more holistically with the other services in the cloud. Or you want to visualize the data that is stored in the Postgres and build intelligent dashboards so that you can, ha you can have a con great intelligent conversation with your line of business owners, you can do so with a click of a button by selecting Postgres as the source for data, and then automatically it'll pull the data and, and help you visualize. Or be it with supporting the, the, the robust growing ecosystem of Postgres extensions, like PostGIS. We support over 35 extensions on the service today. And if you want to, if you want to learn more, and you want to have, and you want to uh, uh, get hands on, there are a lot of quick start tutorials uh, where we walk you through how you go build an intelligent application or how you connect to a Power BI. How do you migrate your data? We also have introduced database migration service uh, that allow users to bring their data from on-premises or virtual machines or any other cloud to Azure with minimal downtime. So they, in the interest of time, I'm actually going to go uh, a little bit faster um, and, and, talk, uh, and talk also about the cloud platform and, with, and, and one uh, core essence uh, which is uh, uh, being productive. Right? What do we mean by productive is really uh, helping you innovate faster. And that's how we are innovating. Our guiding principle of innovation is to how we enable you as customers or users of Postgres, in, uh, Postgres innovate faster. And of course, not only by providing a fully managed service, but, uh, by doing automatic uh, backups, automatic patchings, up upgrades, etc., but also looking at your end-to-end -end development lifecycle starting from the development tools, um, the CI, CD pipelines, all the way up to how do you uh, integrate these data to across the different services and so on. The other, the other core element is hybrid. And we truly believe hybrid is essential for many enterprises and that not all applications will be on the cloud. And there will be a mix of environments there so their application will be on the on-premises and the data will be on the cloud or vice versa and that's how when we build these managed services we build with hybrid in mind and it's not an afterthought and how many of you um, would uh, uh, how many of you are aware of the uh, Azure Active Directory not many so Azure, the, the Azure Active Directory was uh, was initially created with one simple goal in mind. That is how to create a single sign-on experience between on-premises and the cloud. Right? And of course, it's grown and, and, and we continue to work at it. And now today, it's being used to maintain user identities um, across, like for cloud applications that spans across clouds and is used by over 1,000 plus SaaS applications. 
That's what we mean by enabling and unlocking customers and running in a hybrid environment. Intelligent. Now, this is another important, very important uh, innovation that we are continuing to now start driving onto these databases as well. Like, how do we make the service more and more intelligent? And within intelligent, what we mean is leveraging machine learning algorithms to make tuning Postgres better, or using machine learning algorithms to make the service more secure, to make your database more secure. So as a concrete example, we are working on capabilities that will uh, discover, automatically discover through machine learning, uh, the access patterns of which IPs are talking to, usually talking to your database, and, the, and when it discovers that some other uh, IP has tried to connect to your database, it'll, it'll warn you or it'll send you an alert saying that there was a certain malicious type of attack that might be happening in your database so that users can take proactive measures to control and govern their security. That's just an example of how we are taking intelligence, and bringing intelligence into the service so that we can enable more productive um, application use cases. And trusted. More said, I've talked about this, uh, this trust and, 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 and uh, the, the importance of trust, whether be it in the data security area or as customers look at their cloud provider in, uh, in, 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 in driving their uh, digital transformation, they are keenly looking to partner to those that allows and gives the choices to the customers to do what they want in their own terms. In their own terms means if they want to use a set of Microsoft tools and technologies, they can do so. If they want to use open source technologies or any other frameworks, they can do so as well. And our approach is providing that rich differentiation and rich integration and value, not only to the open source tools and frameworks, we will also integrate with Microsoft tools and products. So that means customers have now full freedom. Developers now have full freedom to do what they want to do on their own terms. Not so, my, so, my, so Azure is not selling a religion. Azure is selling a rich range of platforms and choices from which developers can run their, and create their applications. Migrations. So in order to make migration easy, whether be it from Oracle to Postgres or Postgres to Postgres or other, other sources to Postgres, we provide a data migration guide and we've also started previewing database migration service so to, which, which, basic, which basically provides online migration of data from anywhere to the Azure managed Postgres service. So in conclusion, it's been a phenomenal ride and journey for us. When we started, we were like a SQL Server company trying to bring and embrace Postgres. But what we have also learned that the similarities uh, of how um, like the community and Microsoft works and how we want to do it and what we want to do it, and also the dissimilarities, which is essentially our experience bringing Azure SQL Database to the cloud, we believe that you can trust us as, uh, as, as, as an, and, and take us as an ally in driving the innovations forward. Our goal is very simple. We want to make Postgres the best cloud service in the world, for, uh, for, for especially focused on Postgres. So together, we are very encouraged by the warm reception we have got in the community, the wide adoption we have gotten from the community. So we want to work with the community that includes the partners and users in growing and making Postgres the best database in the world. So thank you for listening, and I'll open up for questions. Yes. So, no, it's, 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 it's a connection redirector. So it's, it's, it acts as a connection proxy. So, so 
provides a few functionalities. So number one, in terms of the availability, as clients try to connect to the database, the database is sitting in our data in our data plane, right? So think about the gateway as the control plane, and um, uh, and and the database is kind of running in the in the in the data plane. So clients connect to the gateway, and the gateway is listening, and when they when they and and the gateway keeps the connection. So the clients are still able to connect to the, through to the gateway, right? So even when the database instance is down, they can still connect to the gateway. But yes, the backend connection is dropped, right? Because the instance is not available. But when the instance comes up, it can route the connection to the backend instance. Right? That's the that's the value of the gateway. And the, and the secondly, uh, also uh, from a security perspective, right? So. Um, customers care about security, right? Uh, and whether, like, so whether someone in the in the in the ether is directly able to connect to the database. So the thing is, when they ping the DNS of their server, they're pinging the gateway, um, which is running uh, intrusion detection and advanced Azure security um, um, algorithms, uh, to and 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 not being even able to connect to the database. So the the DNS endpoint that you see is just hitting the gateway, not the actual database instance. Any other questions? So you get a prize for a question. Any any other questions? Yes, there's a question there. Oh, you just want the T-shirt? Okay. <laughs> All right. I know uh, uh, you you are minutes away from lunch, so thank you for coming in and listening, and uh, really appreciate. Uh, um, we working together and 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 kickstart Postgres and make uh, Postgres rock. Thank you. <laughs>